Welcome back, my friends. My name is Eric. This is Rome. We're back with some more Alpha Access for Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. Um, we are back on the ship. We've kind of done what I could do. Um, I'm going to kind of walk around here a little bit. We've got our, our throne up there. Um, just kind of explore the, the bridge of the ship here. Haven't had journeys uh, like the one from Yukad to Furabundus in a while. Have you heard about Fuel Depot 7? Uh, I haven't. What, what happened? Oh, don't even remind me. I had friends in the guards. Well, I had a friend. He perished when his bloody generous went mad with warp sorcery. Oh, okay. Well, sounds like a bad day. Um, oh, three, do you copy? Finish the cleaning and return to docking station. Okay, let's wander up here. We've got some other stuff going on. Thought we'd just kind of explore. Uh, now, Ryan uh, had suggested down in the comments back a couple episodes if uh, I could use the melt -a bombs on the fence back at Footfall to blow through it and uh, get through into the area we couldn't get into. I did go back and try it. Um, I did not get a result. Uh, it appears to me that it's something, they're probably something like lock picking, right? Where you have a, a place you can click and you hold and drag it out and you have a couple options, you know, use a melt -a bomb, climb the fence, whatever, something like that. So it wouldn't let me just use it on the fence without something like that. Um, Bridge Technomat, does he say something? Does Jay say something? Ah, here we go. All right. Uh, Jay smiles broadly, showing her pearly teeth. Allow me to thank you again for helping with my cargo. Shireen, I am sure the Ash Mags who scrolled away my goods won't give up so early as early, and I'll hear more about their scheming yet. Let's strike a deal, Shireen. I will watch your back if you do me the favor and watch mine. The woman laughs melodically. Well, enough jokes. Is there anything you want? Um... Hmm. Did you know uh, my predecessor? Uh, it is difficult not to be aware of the powers that be, especially ones like Captain Theodora. Uh, like Lord Captain Theodora. But we never met personally, as the difference between our positions is too great. Theodora was a mighty ruler, the center of our own universe, and I, a pathetic commoner, with nothing, was nothing next to her. But you were kind to me, Shireen, and in my eyes it put you above your esteemed aunt, or whoever she was to you. Um... You keep using words I don't understand, like calling me Shireen. Well, it's to make, make her sound Southern. I mean, that's, that's what it is. Uh, the language of a freak, my homeworld, is quite different from the one spoken in the Cronus Expanse. We bestow more than one meaning upon each word, allowing our wise men to fully express their sage Ace's thoughts, and us lowly commoners, our base passions and desires. Take Ozzy, for example. That is what I call every piece of scum and villain, because Ozzy means evil and foe and pathetic worm unworthy of consideration. Or take Ashmag. It means uh, fool and little brother and blind man who stumbles and would fall into a pit without guidance. Shireen is, Shireen means friend and comrade and roommate in a battle formation, like we are, Rogue Trader. All right. Argenta seems to have gotten under your skin. Argenta, what could be more beautiful than the sight of a sister of battle whose mere presence casts light in the dark corners of lost souls such as mine? But alas, what remains of my sanity is telling me that poor Jay can only admire the radiance of this angel, forsaking any hope of ever touching. Ooh, a little Twitter pated there, I see, huh? All right. Uh, I've seen enough of the shiny wrapping. Tell me about the dark side. The dark side is the real Coronas Expanse, if you ask me, but what do you want to know about it? Uh, how do they do things on football? Dynasty heirs drink with criminals. Rogue traders strike deals with the Kos Kospalika, and dozens of ships stop off for a welcome break from the long voyage. Is there a more beautiful place in the entire Imperium? The Emperor is merciful to the meek and the powerful alike. There's a job for everyone, as long as they have a head on their shoulders. And if you feel like talking to him in person, the statue of the Exalted One can be seen from any asteroid. You can pray to your heart's content. Uh, tell me about the Kospalika commission. Uh, an ancient crime cartel that originated with the first settlers in the Calexis sector. It is run by shadowy clans with robber barons at the helm. Cross their path and you risk making enemies all over the Cronus Expanse, or even the entire Imperium. As for the agents, they are just shameless, greedy scum. Every third person on football is, ca is a Caspolican, but that doesn't mean all that rot and filth is acting together. I've been set up more than once just so some Caspolican can get, a, get one over on his rivals. And yet, the Caspolica is generous to its customers, if you can afford it. Anything can be attained, organized, and transported for the right price. The customer's always right, unless they happen to be a rat. In which case, Jay sighs and throws up her hands. Hey, persuasion check. Uh, scum, rot, and filth rats. It is almost as if Jay's mask briefly slipped and she started using words that have no place in the vocabulary of someone from the utter, upper strata of the Imperium. Who says she's from the upper strata? 
mean, she herself said she was a commoner. I don't know. Um, are you one of Caspolica's robber barons? What gave you such an outrageous idea? Was it my immaculate garment, my gorgeous jewelry? Do not worry, Shireen. I will let you know once I become a baroness, should the exalted one will it. Just imagine a strong and fruitful alliance could be forged between a rogue trader and a mastermind of the Caspolica. Uh, how did you become a Caspolican agent? It's not hard to do on footfall. I spent a year working with, for good old Christo. He's a brave soldier who gave up the ghost and scuff with orcs and then took over his business. Having a good head on your shoulders and keeping the exalted one in your heart helps to establish new contacts quickly. Eventually, I gathered a group of honest and loyal people, and it only took a few successful contracts for the Caspolica to take notice. I quickly settled on footfall and started dispensing my wisdom to my protégés and subordinates. I lost the taste for getting my hands dirty. Uh, tell me about the cold trade. It's really simple, Shireen. The Caspolica runs the Imperium Black Market, offering special goods to those who can afford their services. Yes, I'm talking about Xeno artifacts too, alien weapons technology, sometimes even certain kinds of living creatures. Unlike road traders whose sacred warrants make them immune to even the laws, the exalted one Caspolican agents are used to hiding and covering their tracks. Nobody wants to draw unwanted attention, no matter who might take an interest, especially now that the Cronus Expanse is a warrior of the Golden Throne as its watchman. Um, you don't look like a typical smuggler. No truer words have ever been said. I'm far more exciting than a small time peddlers from footfall. Chai performs a graceful and somewhat exotic curtsy. Allow me to introduce myself properly. I'm Jay Amira Fathreen Tamira S. Freet, the twelfth daughter of the Lord of Afrit, a distant world at the fringes of the Imperium. Ah, there we go. That's we should have read that before we got the bit about the about the language. The youngest child is destined to become a bargaining chip in the family's political games, but I was one unwilling to accept such a fate and wanted to choose what to become and which path to follow. When I learned of the when I learned of the exalted one watches over hundreds of other worlds amidst instant stars, I understood there was an entire world of opportunities behind, beyond Afrit. All I had to do was break the familiar bonds, tying me down, escape the planet, which I did a long time ago. Um, I think that's enough for now. We can come back and talk to her later. Um, I guess I can hit escape. Oh, there we go. See you later. That's It, it hides it. <laughs> and it's not clear that there's a deal there. All right. Um... We do have some more people we should talk to. I don't want to take up too much of the time, but I know, let's see, where is our uh, sister of battle? Uh, so there is Pascal. Argenta, there she is. I know she. we were supposed to talk to her when we got back, I think. All right. Uh, Greet you with the slightest half bow. Lord Captain, I'm glad you came. I wish to apologize for my prior coldness. After our first meeting, I was concerned that you would turn out to be a rod and an offshoot of the Von Valencia's family tree, like like the traitor Coonrod. Uh, but now I see you are a worthy leader and a servant of the Imperium. I'm glad to be your comrade. Um, I'd like to discuss the Solace Prime and the relic you want to find. Of course, my mission is all I think about. Uh, tell me about... Si Saint Argenta, ooh, whose relic you're searching for. Um, gladly, listen, she begins her tale with her eyes half closed and her voice almost singing. Long ago, there was a blessed world. Thousands of stars covered the sky there, so bright that its denizens hardly knew the darkness of the night. Thousands of rivers nurtured the soil, thousands of gardens bloomed every spring, and every moment, thousands of prayers were flying into the clear air, thinking, thinking and praising the emperor. I'm already bored of her story. But one day, the people learned the meaning of darkness. Like a storm, accursed heretics who sold themselves to the archenemy descended upon the planet. Shells flew from the sky that desolated whole cities and burned the gardens and filled the riverbeds with the blood of the faithful. Smoke and soot swallowed the skies and a thousand stars that had once shone over the world. Among the handful of survivors was one orphan who'd watched all her family die and the garden she'd grown up burned to ash. But in her heart, she knew the absolute truth. Just these three words, the emperor protects. And knowing that, she never looked away from the black, terrifying, smoke-covered sky there were no more bright stars to be seen except for one. The one star, the bright star, the silver star shone in the sky, and when the orphan smiled at it, the one star fell right into her hands. All the faithful in every corner of the continent who saw the trail of the falling star recognized his omen and went looking for the place where it landed, and they rallied together and with the light in the one star, they found their salvation. So what is this one star? Ah, if only I knew. Neither the hagiography nor the legends give a straight answer. Classic iconographers believe the star turned into a banner woven from silver thread, which, when brought onto the battlefield, would shed light that blinded only heretics, but as did no harm to the faithful. Most of them portrayed Sardagenta as a young woman carrying this banner. Others think that the falling from 
that upon falling from the sky, the one star became a holy chain sword, which are generally later used to strike down monsters and enemies of the Imperium. Some of the earlier engravings are Argenta's depicted wearing power armor with a silver star on her chest. One theological story suggests that this armor was, in fact, the relic. Some even think that the one star is actually the ship on which Argenta traveled. I'll be so happy to have finally found the answer that the Ecclesiarchy has been pondering for millennia. I hope we find a way to the Solace Prime soon. The ruinous powers must be working against us on purpose. They stand in the way of faith. All right. One day I'll reach Solace Prime and stand before the gates of St. Argenta ship. I know it. I believe it. All right. Not much else there. Okay. Uh, we could, if we so choose, um, go take a look at our quarters, which I believe are through here. And we can kind of see... We've got a large gothic entryway here with no furniture, nothing, one piece of artwork. Obviously, uh, the previous Lord Rogue Trader, Theodora von Valencius. She's awfully, uh, thinks awfully highly of herself. She has a giant entry room just for a picture of herself. You know, as, as large as the shrine, if not larger. All right, what do we got? We got uh, some trophies, I guess. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Some sort of... I don't know. It's just a chunk of something sticking out of the wall with no detail. Um, not from this angle, anyway. Kind of looks sharkish, I guess. Um, obviously, we've got our little study over here with a little bit of a library. Cogitator of some sort. Okay. Back through here, we have a bedroom, I'm guessing. Oh, we got all sorts of stuff back here. We do have a bedroom. Okay, nice. Oh, hold on. Uh, remain strength and heal the wounds. Ah, that's how we that's how we wake 24 hours pass. Okay. Uh, another head up here that's a little easier to see. Lots of tongues. I guess there's a there's a taste for that sort of thing on the internet, so why not? Um, and uh, I guess that's the bath. Heck of a bath. Oh, okay, let's go ahead and wait the 24 hours, just because we can. We are injured at the moment. Two days, zero hours. I guess that's how long it takes all our wounds to heal up. All right, let's go back and let us see where we want to fly. I think that's the next bit. Okay. So, let's go up to here. How close do we have to get? There we go. Season captains use star systems, quirk the advantage. Astrid feels uh, something, 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 something. Altair. Um, okay. So, that is back to the bridge. That's warp travel. Do we want to check out Altair 17? A scan is required. Let's 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 head that way. We'll do the scan. Why not? Um, I think that's a date up there. Apparently, while we're here, we can just kind of move around. It doesn't really change the, as far as the date goes. All right, scan is required. Discovered Altair X 17. <laughs> System for Abundus. All right, we got 50 XP for that. Added to the encyclopedia. Now, I do have mobile extractums. Um, it's got nothing on it at the moment. So it's got no Prometheum. It's got no mechanisms. It's got no Plasteel. It's got nothing. So I don't see that there's any reason to put a mobile extractium on it at the moment. No resources. Okay. And there's nothing else. Can we move around the system at all? No, that's, that's what we got. So let's go ahead and... Let's go warp travel. So we know that uh, all of the routes have been wiped out. We don't have any routes that we know of. We have to figure everything else out. So I have no idea what we're going to see when we get here. So that's two Imperium, Cauldron, warp travel. So we're going to have to probably research these. The Chrono That's a big map. Founding Worlds. A cool looking map, isn't it? The Accursed Immense. Okay. Winter Scales Realm. All right.
So I'm assuming like all of these blocks here are places we can go. But let's go to to Imperium. Let's click it and see what happens since it's the only other thing on scan is required. Okay, well, how do I scan it? Uh, I'm not sure. Journal, character, inventory, cargo management, colony manager. Navigator's Insight. Ah, uh, so I need three Navigator's Insight. All right, so let's go back and let's see if we can talk to our, our uh, Navigator and see what we can figure out. That would make sense because, again, we did say that we didn't have any of that. So there's Abelard. Um, bridge, bridge, bridge. Where might she be? Servitor. She down here. Too. There she is. All right, Cassia. Uh, I was glad to talk to her too. Uh, uh, tell me about yourself. Uh, I'm part of House Arcilio, the silent ancient dynasty. Uh, the stairway atlas can say 2,843 routes, the chart sectors, and reach all the way from Cronus Expanse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, listen, silence. Uh, and you know the Imperium's thousands of the world. House Arcilio is bound by the contracts. Dark blue knot, tightening on your neck. I see your reply is not satisfying. Um, so you've never lived anywhere other than your Act 5. Hardly. According to the Chronicles of the House, I was born on one of the Arcilio worlds. Vert, Erkvi, was it? Oh, forgive me. My childhood memories are too vague. Sometimes I dream about bright and colorful birds that built their nests in the garden, or the servants dressed in purple livery, or the blue fog that rolled over the lowlands. But everything is covered in rosy haze. Perhaps it's my imagination, not memory, this painting, these pictures. Um, what does it feel like to guide a vessel through the warp? Maybe difficult to describe. You see, every navigator perceives the warp differently. My mentor, Regent Toronto, always described his travels through Materium as a journey through a vast wood with countless paths. And I, assisting in the first voyages, futilely tried to follow example, but the wood would not reveal itself to me. Uh, but everything changed when I found my own key to this mystery. See, I've always brightened up in my rare moments of leisure time by painting. You may recall that there was a workshop in my chambers. As soon as I imagined the warp as a blank canvas, an indescribable feeling came over me. I moved the brush, going deeper and deeper into my own painting. Visions were hidden within vibrant colors of the palette, and something inside me knew which knew which should be brought out and which should be left behind. I woke up several days later, and the voyage was completely safe. Um, I've noticed your love of painting is reflected in your speech as well. You associate so many images with hues and colors. The Emperor graced me with a gift. I can see inner life in addition to the mundane. You cannot know that a fruit is rotten from the inside until a blade slices in two. I can see the rot from far away. It roils like swamp mud oozing in the bright peel, anger and boredom, sadness and joy. Uh, everything people shut away is revealed to me like colors in the canvas world. Um, do you always conceal your third eye? Uh, it's baneful to whoever the warp shrewdness shine falls upon and therefore it is a simple power. We are the guiding stars of humanity. Uh, found worthy of an uncommon goal, uncommon gift, and one that uh, and one of the duties we bear is to guard our eye from even the wayward glances that may bear you. All right. Besides, I'm aware that less assurance the Imperium may find our appearance repulsive. The navigator gene twists the features of the rabble are used to seeing the magnificence of a role cannot be grasped by feeble minds. Um, who cares about the opinion of short-sighted rabble? Um, they can serve us and die for us to keep their thoughts to themselves. No, we're, well, I and mean, that's probably, I don't know. We already commented last time that, that we wondered if there was in fact romance in this. Let's, let's, let's keep pushing it. We'll, we'll see what happens. You're beautiful, Cassie, and I'll let anyone, anything convince you otherwise. Falters are pale cheeks turning pink. Oh, Lord, Captain, you overstepped the bounds of propriety. Oh, wait, why don't we talk about something else? Um, what does your special sight reveal? You're engulfed in clouds, the color of dark umber. They carry an old pain and doubt. As if trance reaches for the shoulders with the tips of her fingers, a strange feeling of relief comes over you, as if your lungs have fully opened, allowing you to take a deep breath for the first time in ages. The young woman knows her expression and jerks away, frightened. Um, I beg I beg forgiveness for my appropriate behavior. When I see such oppressive colors, I immediately want to paint them a different hue, to dispense them. Or to disperse them. I already mentioned I cannot control it, except except this time I thought I'd be able to for whatever reason. Um, there's no need to apologize. You mastered the power in order to aid another to aid me. I'm great. All right. She's shyly smooth her perfect hair. All right. Uh, this is where uh, I beg my leave. All right. That did not get me what I wanted to get. Um, bridge officer. Ready for orders. Uh, Adira, what does she have? Does she have anything useful? Um, 
I'm going to leave for the moment. That doesn't look like it's going to get me what I wanted to get to. We'll, we'll talk to everybody at some point, but I don't think we need to talk to them all right now. Uh, the question is, how the heck do we do... Do we fly through the warp? What does Abelard have to say? Is there anything special about it? Um... Nope. Doesn't look like it. Let me check the uh, library. Encyclopedia. Worlds. Okay, we've got one world. The Explorator feat is uninformed. <laughs> All right. Uh, mechanical glossary. Uh, warp. It's not there. Uh, Codex Webway, Drukari. Nope. Warp. Uh, it is the source of a psychic powers, yada, yada, yada. This is a link. There's just a link to a test entry. Okay. Warp travel. I don't see navigator. Hmm. All right, let's give it another go. Let's see what we can figure out here. All right, so we're at for Abundus, right? We've got... There we go. Look at that. I figured it out. Scan plus one. All right, so this one still takes three. Um, Omicron, Cradle of Kepri, Platinum Stust. Now, this one is a good one, right? It's, it's green, yellow versus red. So I assume that means warp travel, warp route, but... Uh, there could be difficulties. And is this one more warp? Oh, that one's even more difficult. Okay, well, let's 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 go here. Let's go to Soto's tomb. Uncharted system. Yeah, except we got to start, you know, placing, you know, discovering stuff here. We are here, so we may as well go to here. There we go. Click on it a couple times. Um, let's go to begin the scan. Five plaz steel. Okay. What is that? That's plaz steel. Uh, Imperium cartographers and chronicles know this place well. Long ago, the world was a prosperous Imperium outpost capable of eclipsing footfall. There was a Cyclopium tomb station on its orbit. The final resting place of Cornelius Soto, one of the discoveries of the Cornus Expanse, gave its name to the entire system. Okay. However, for about 400 years ago, an unknown cosmic body rammed into the station, causing it to collapse into the planet. Not only did the catastrophe kill the settlers, it also made the world uninhabitable for centuries. Uh, the crater formed in the station's impact can still be observed from orbit. Maybe that's what that's supposed to be. Um, this sort of place is neither loot nor company, but knowledge of the nasty tricks that life can pull is a treasure in its own right. Okay. But it says here... You will spend one to start extracting. Okay, I guess I've got 19. Let's see if that's what it gives it to me. Yep, that's what it got me. All right. So now we're producing five of that. Perfect. I don't know what that means. Um, we'll have to see, but we're getting five plasteel from here, I assume. Okay. So this is what we're actively getting, not what the planet has available. This is what the planet has available. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at space dust. Save to cargo, energy battery. Press B if you want to open cargo screen. Um, I don't see it here. I don't know where plasma batteries. There we go. Unusable items, 100%. Okay. Um, oh, we must have got it just from going to the space dust. So we got it from exploring that. What do we get here? Uh, energy battery, press B. Okay. I'm going to hit it one more time. Two plasma batteries. All right. So there's something we could sell. I don't see anything else here. I don't think we can scan the sun or anything. Nope. All right. So let's go ahead and we will do some more warping. Let's see what we can do. Uh, where, where, where are we? That's winter scales. It Nice to put us up where we were, huh? Right. Let's do another quick scan. 
Okay. We've got two now. Now this could be slightly dangerous. Let's go ahead and determines the probability. Press to reduce difficulty. Now we're going to give it a go. Oh, hold on though. Before we do that, I'm going to do a quick save. And then we'll give it a go because I hadn't hit quick save yet. Let's see what happens. Uh, we made it apparently. Nice. All right, we do have pirates here. Um, we've got a step world. Let's go ahead and take a look at the step world first. Several pirates are closing in on top of us. Uh, yep, let's go for it. I was kind of hoping we get some space combat. So we have a number of officers. Each officer is at their spot, right? Um, this is our possibilities. We have weapons that have various um, arcs. So you can see we have a dorsal. So that would be a spine mounted weapon. We have port weapons and we have starboard weapons. So um, fire four shots, dealing 10, four shots, dealing 10, two shots, dealing 10. So we have to kind of decide what we want. So they're coming in. We've got one there and one here. I wonder then if we maybe go. Hmm. If we go here and take the dorsal shot, I'm going to... Oh, so if we go like that, that takes how many movement points? Takes a bunch of... Okay. I'm going to do that. Well, hold on. Let's see. If we go to here, all movement points should be used to end the turn. Oh. Can I then do this? No. Okay. But if I go to here, will that get me in? Nope. I go to here, will that get me in? Another salvo. Okay. And then I want to go here. And that will be my port. So we'll go here. Set the course. There we go. Now, what do you got? Um, swing run. Flies in a straight line, performing a U-turn at the end. Oh, okay. Um, you've got a chosen sector of the ships is reinforced until the next turn. The reinforced sector has increased chance to absorb energy and lose only half of its strength. Um, so I want to go left, right, back. All right, so we're going to go left. Right? And what do you have? Um, scan weakness to scan a ship to highlight its weak points. All incoming damage from the weak side increases by 30% for two turns. Only one weakness may be highlighted at a time. Okay, well, let's let's give it a go. Oh, is the front the weakness? Interesting. Well, I've also got a lance weapon. 34 damage to chose within a narrow firing arc and torpedo tubes. Um, torpedoes are controllable units which begin to act next turn and do a great deal of damage to enemies. So I can go here. Unleash our vengeful salvo. Okay, I think that's the end of my turn. So now this guy's got to come in. Another pirate, Kroba class destroyer. All right, he's going to take some shots at me. We're fine. We should be fine. Miss, miss, miss. Interesting. Okay. All right. Plasma torpedoes. Um, they're going to go here. Perfect. And then I'll hit. Then we should be next, right? All right. So now I am going to do port side. Sorry, starboard side. We can hit there. The the nice. Now I'm going to go. Um, How narrow is that? Pretty darn narrow. And I don't have an easy way to get around there. Um. What if... 
What if we go forward and then go back and get the starboard sh weapons on him? How about that? So flies in a straight line, performing a U-turn at the end of its turn. So we go like that. And then we go, oh, and then I go like this. I think that'll work. And then can I get this on him? Yes, I can. Oh, look at that. That was nice. And we've also got our dorsal mounted weapon there too. Okay, they missed. But I'm going to kind of assume the plasma torpedoes are gonna finish him off, assuming we can get him in on him. Now we're headed back this way. We've got this guy up here. We could, in theory, you know, split the group and shoot both directions. He's gonna take a shot at us. Miss, miss, took 10 damage on the second one. 14 and uh, I, I don't know. It didn't really give us much else, did it? He's just running away. Oh wait, uh, they're gonna go this way. He's got no shields left on the back or on the back. Okay. Ah, uh, now those are our shields there. So we probably want to turn. I'm gonna let those chase him down. Uh, if I go to here, they're gonna probably have to go through us. So I'm going to, I start with Star Starbird. I probably should have done this, but that's okay. It is that side. All right, and it is weak now. Um, so now I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. Macro cannon, volley. This, oh, and then, see if they go through, I'm going to put those that way. Then I'm going to want to go like this, I think. Right? We'll give them the stern for the moment because they're going to have to go through. Whether they go that direction or not, I don't know. But let's go this way. Spin up here so they don't have access to the bit that doesn't have it. And we'll end our turn. Ah, I did get some shots through the back there. That's okay. All right, they've moved quite a ways. You're still running. I think the missiles, the torpedoes will be able to catch you this time. Um, these torpedoes. Um, I'm going to run this way. These torpedoes. They've almost caught him. He's running. Can I get you with that? Nope. Can I spin around this way and get you? Restart shields. Nope, that's that turn. All right, he's gonna keep going. That should work fine for us because we should be able to boost in there. Might even be able to get him with those, tor those uh, torpedoes this turn. Oh, our other torpedoes disappeared. Okay, so you only have like three turns to get him in on him. These we got in though. Suck it. Oh yeah, there we go. All right, it's something. He's got no more shields anywhere on that side. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move to here. Bleed them. Is that it? I'm gonna go to here. Another salvo. Got him. All right, and we'll spin this way. All right, what's he doing? Is he just running away? No, he's gotta come back at some point. He has given us the shield side. Uh, I'm going to just kind of go this way. Um, I think that's it.
All right, and I'm going to go to here. Try to hit him with the forward lance, because that's crazy. This one's going down. I'm going to drop the torpedoes out this side. I'm going to go ahead and hit him here. And that was that. Never mind. I don't even need the torpedoes. That was a good explosion. Battle is over. All right. That was a good time. I like that. I like that type of battle. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a scan here on the step world. And then we'll probably call it a day. What do we get? 50 XP. There is something here. But not resources. A hu small human dwelling stands in this barren, deserted world. Scouts report that an old hermit lives here who spends his days in prayers to the emperor. Um, ask the old hermit for a blessing. The Lord's captain surprised, the old hermit turns out to be a navigator. When the old man discovered the noble status of his visitor, he willingly recounted his tale. He had retreated to this planet long ago when he was still in his youth. After he realized that his mind could not withstand the frequent forays into the materium, the realm of the arch enemy. The hermit spoke with pride about how he worshipped the emperor each and every moment of his life, but when he mentioned the golden light of the Astronomicon, his voice quivered. When his guests left, he stared after them for a long time, his gaze filled with sadness. Oh, Well, that's sad. We'll end this episode here, though. Thanks for watching, guys. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll come back next time as we continue our exploration of space and the Immaterium. We'll see you then. Cheers.